So you saw us getting the unit in, we managed to get it all the way up the garden. Now those sorts of things can be absolutely fraught with problems, but if you think it through, and Stuart, and he was sort of confident that we'd get it through the doorway, and of course the crane guy was also confident, so we managed to get it through, no problem at all. So we're at the point, we've done all of our first fix inside, we've done our plasterboarding, and we've done our plumbing first fix, so this is the point where we get the MVHR in. Now, if you've watched some of the video on Skill Builder when I did the MVHR in the house, this is very, very similar. It works in a similar process. But as Stuart was explaining about the fact that this particular machine has got the ability to heat and cool the air as well, it's a much nicer solution, especially for a garden room like this, which may get hot, it may get cold, and it's all about energy saving as well. So I've actually got Simon here from SL Services, and he's going to run through with us now the parts, the bits, what we're going to fix, what we're not going to fix, and how it basically operates. So let's get on and do that. It's looking pretty good. So Simon, we're doing the MVHR part. So talk everyone through exactly what we're doing next. Okay, what do you want to see first, basically? Well, tell everyone about the blue hose, the blue pipe. Okay, so what we're going to use in your property here is a radial ductwork system. This one, 75 mil out of diameter just makes it easier to navigate through smaller places, basically. Yeah. We exclusively use this size because we're used to it and because we think it works best for us in the places that we have to install. Yeah, and uh, it's not dissimilar to, I it, think I had 90 mil over there and it was quite hard work. It's very similar to 90 mil, yeah. but if you look at the 75, you'll find you get that bit more flexibility out of it rather than the 90 being quite rigid. Yeah. It makes it easier to get around corners, in roof spaces, posi joists and things like that. And I can remember when I did my um, BPEC yes. for qualifications for the MVHR, um, there's so much goes into this calculation wide. For example, you can get a 90 degree corner, but you've got to add all of those up. You've exactly. got to know exactly what the flow rate is Correct. and the losses are. So the more pulled bends, the better, because the resistance is so much less, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. The more bends right. you put in something, the more pressure you get in the system, the more noise you're likely to have. So these go on our floor. They will, correct. And we'll insulate around them, we'll insulate over them, the screed then goes over the top. So where do they all go back to? So literally, they're all heading back towards a manifold. In right. essence, it's almost like a big underfloor heating system, but we're moving air, of course. So into our manifold, they'll go the 75 mil pipes, connect up here and be sealing to them for air tightness. And then from this manifold, we'll be running back towards the machine. Right, so we're gonna come through where we've made this hole. That's correct. And Turn through 90 degrees. Yeah, turn through 90 degrees, approximately yeah. there. Yeah. And again, onto here, and we're gonna run into an adapter, which will convert into round, which is the same size as our spigot on top of the MVHR unit. That's amazing. And then I know that I've gonna make a couple of holes through the roof. Afraid so. <laughs> and then it's similar to what I had to do in the house. Yeah. In fact, um, I must admit though, this like unit, the fact that it's doing hot water, underfloor heating via an electric boiler, six yep. kilowatt electric boiler. It's doing MVHR, so it takes all of the extract, all of the moist, stale air, and it gives us clean, fresh air. We take the energy from the, I'm just re remembering all. Yep. We take the energy yeah. from that warm, stale air from exactly. the extracts. Anything where we're falsely creating heat, particularly, we want it. Yeah, so in bathrooms and kitchens, we need that, we want to reuse that, we want to re recover that heat and use it to power that small heat pump in that unit. Yeah, so people will ask me questions in the comments like, so what, do, do you really need to have this? No, you don't. Ventilation is a broad brush. There's all different kinds of ways of doing ventilation. However, I mean, I'm, in, I'm a fanatic about building, so I like to build now really well insulated, really well executed insulation, airtight as much as possible. But if you build airtight, you must get your ventilation right because what you do in a new build situation, the, the least ventilation is a trickle vent calculated in a window, for example. And some people then crack the window open and that's considered to be ventilation. Or you may have like a forced, um, a passive stack ventilation in a building as well. But a lot of those are energy hungry because they just take all that warm air straight out and there's nothing exactly. happening to it. So Exactly. It's one of our bugbears, basically. You build a building airtight and then you put trickle vents in windows or in doors. And what happens is you get negative pressure pulling outside cold in mm. or vice versa. Mm. Mm. And you're just getting rid of heat that you've created. Mm. Why would you want to do that? I know, yeah. and it's, um, I know a lot of people when they're building, okay, everyone has a budget, everyone has to make sure they stick to their budgets, and I do get into lots of conversations with people who are 
planning to do a self-build or even a big extension where they could have an MVHR to run on its own you exactly. know, as a separate yeah. sort of thing. And as soon as they start looking into the cost, because it wasn't in their budget initially, their mind, they haven't got room for it. Yeah, it's, you know? it's an educational process yeah. for us as well as, as suppliers of MVHR units. Yeah. But uh, the interesting thing for, for me personally, obviously I've known your brother Stuart for many, many years because he just first came up and had a chat with yep. all about this sort of stuff. But this unit actually is the perfect solution for me. It's got everything in it. Yes. I've got no gas up here. I don't want gas up here. I just want to be running on electric, potentially solar, and some suggestions of wind or whatever. In your circumstance, it's a plant room in a box. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what it does. Yeah, yeah. and it's, um, I just think it's really nice. And you've fitted how many of these? Lots now. Lots, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, and we're nearly in thousands, I believe. Really? Now. Yeah, yeah, in thousands. Of this it? particular unit of, of MVHR, we're yeah. well over the thousands. And, and you generally the UK. put them into small houses, flats. Uh, a lot of the time, these will be going into sort of large, uh, smaller flats in London, sort of high rise blocks and things like that. But also, a lot of self builders will take one of these if they're energy minded, yeah. you know, conscious about what they're building they'll be looking at one of these units because it does replace a number of different items. Mm, mm. Uh, they're suitable for um, you know, this size building, maybe mm. 50 square meters, mm. even up to, if we get a slightly different model, up to about 180 square meters. It's a, that's a big house. But you're then limited on your hot water. So in we just have to be how much hot water you can generate and produce. Exactly. You know, if you've got three on the suites, yeah. you might be needing to look at something. Yeah. But there's other things you can do beyond this machine yeah. as well, or add-ons to this yeah. machine to assist with that. I think it's super interesting. Anyway, we're going to get on and get these pipes in now. I've been cutting holes. I was going to take you around. I'll show you where we're doing. And yeah, I'm, and we'll capture some of this footage. That'd be great. Excellent. All right, Let's nice get cracking. One. So while the guys are now getting ready before we start putting the pipes in. I obviously had to work out the runs with the guys. Now these are the actual supply boxes that the pipes run into here. And so what happens is we've screwed these to the floor, we connect the ducts to them, and then the screeding's all done. We'll put some temporary covers over the top of these. The screeding's done, the finished floors are put in, and then we simply cut them down to finished floor, and they have a really nice grill that goes over the top. So this is the supply air, this is where all of the fresh air that's coming in, which is either heated, cooled, um, will come. So then I've had to cut through here. So we've got a pair of pipes coming through here. These ones come through this room here. They do a nice bend. They pass through this sole plate here. Then they go dead straight. And then they're gonna turn into the manifold. Now what we're gonna try and do is keep the pipe runs parallel to the walls or maybe run them at 45 degrees. So when I'm putting my PIR, I've got a 100 millimeter PIR, which goes around the pipes. Then I've got 25 millimeters that goes over the top of the pipes before the slip membrane for the underfloor heating. So there's another set of pipes which are gonna run through here. And then on this long wall, we've got another outlet there, fresh air, and another one here. So there's some symmetry there. And in the furthest point away, we've also got fresh air being introduced here. So once we've got the pipes in, it'll all be a bit more clear. And in this room, there's one there. So it's, um, it's quite interesting. Let's talk a little bit about the extracts. So the extracts are mainly in the wet areas. So we've got a cloakroom here. We've got a shower here. So there'll be one in the cloakroom one in the shower area, and we're also going to be taking one through into what is this area here, where there's also a small kitchen sink. So effectively, you could be generating steam here in this point here, where there's a little kitchen sink, or boiling a kettle again. All of that stuff needs extracting. And as I said, my windows here do not have trickle vents. They're airtight, they're nice and sealed. So that's basically why MVHR, is a solution for us. A measure on that? Yeah, I've got a measure on that. Get that and then we can start on the other. Yeah, if you can cut it. Um, uh, yeah, 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 if you've got it. Is, is that along there, yeah? Uh, yeah. Nice one, dude, yeah. On the other side as well. So you're busy doing all the technical work, guys. That's right, Robin. Get, getting all those nice, interesting bits done. This is, this is looking good, isn't it? So, this is our supply air coming out of the top of the unit there. 
And then we've obviously had to go down to 220 by 90 yeah. flat backs here so you can get through to the manifold. Nice Thank you very much. That's it. And that goes all the way through, straight through there. Yeah, that looks perfect, doesn't Just it? Just making a measure, we'll be linking up, then we'll start running blue yeah. pipe. He loves it. That's good. So what else I had to do is I made those holes there. I've also obviously had to take some brickwork out here. I've also had to do in here, up in this corner, a bit dark, let's see that. I've obviously had to make some access there because that's where our extract ventilation will pass through. So there's a little bit more work to do in here. Then I've left this ceiling down at the moment because it runs across the top of this void that I left for it. And then all of the extract um, points come off of there. So it's looking good. It's looking good. The guys are busy, busy, busy getting it all done. How are we getting on? Yeah, not too bad at all, actually, Robin. Yeah. So we've got final position of the machine, which is really good. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know you're going to pop some tar vents through your roof for us, so we yeah. can connect the main fresh air in and used air out onto those. That'll probably happen next week at some point. Um, we've now got our supply side of the unit completely done. So this one into the house. Yeah. With some attenuation in line for practice. Lagged all the way through because we always lag because the unit has cooling ability as well, right, so we okay. don't get condensation. Yeah, and that runs into our manifold here. Yeah, and then we branch out into 75 mil pipes. Yeah, which run to various places in your floor, supplying air through those. So it looks it looks it looks really nice, neat, and tidy, isn't it? I'm pleased you think that as well. Yeah, we like to try and keep things neat, and we like to try and make it easier for you insulating either side of all these pipes, obviously. So yeah, yeah, we try and keep things as neat and tidy as we possibly can. It's, yeah. it's part of the job, and it's, it's part of the, what we like to do. It's um, funny because you learn all the time in building, and um, let's take this scenario where I've got 120 mil insulation on the floor, yep. and you've got a 70 mil pipe. So even though every now and then, because I'm using a clip track system, which is self-adhesive, yep. we only have to put a few clips in here and there. Yeah. So as long as I use a 50 mil clip, I'm, well, I'm never gonna go into one of these pipes anyway because I'm no. 120 and you're 75, so I'm almost yeah, perfect. Yeah, you should be fine. And I think you can get low, low level clips nowadays that are going to 25 mil insulation yeah, even well, if you're that... under floor pipes. So you're, you're well above there. And if, and if, if you were to hit one with one of the plastic clips for your underfloor, it's not gonna go through that. It's not gonna go through this. Yeah, these so, are pretty solid. So, so we've got all these different outlets that are gonna blow the fresh air. Where else have we got them? Exactly, so we're here, we've got two. It's the largest area in this, in here. So we've got actually a total of three outlets, yeah. which means we're gonna get good airflow into here. Oh yeah, there's another one there. And then if we move into your, what's technically out of the, This other little room, yeah. Small room there, we've got a single outlet in there, although it's two pipes running into it, just for sufficient flow rate in the smaller area. And the last ones have had to go this way to avoid that sort of waste pipe across the floor, haven't they? Yeah, and, that, and that's great because that's the flexibility of the 75 mil ductwork in our opinion. You know, mm. you have the ability to be able to move it around things like we've got here where we're avoiding the waste pipe and the conduit. It's just a lot easier mm. than trying to navigate old steel ductwork and certainly large bore ductwork mm. as well. So it makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, it certainly does. And um, yeah, so that's brilliant. And I want to get on now. You've done well today, boys, haven't you? Not too bad at all. I know that I've probably held you up because you had to wait for me to cut a few holes and everything. <laughs> uh, it's pretty much standard practice when you're going to build inside. Though, yeah, it, it certainly but is, mate. No, but we're, we're good. We're happy with what's happened today and hopefully we'll see you at the next stage. Yeah, and so the next time we'll be on the channel will be when we do final commissioning then, will it? Uh, I think we could pop back. Maybe you might want to take a video of when the machine's completely finished with the, oh, yeah. with the ductwork to atmosphere. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. Um, and then we will be probably commissioning time after that. So ah, brilliant. That's when it gets really interesting. Brilliant. Well, here comes the other lads. So, yeah, well, thanks, so thanks very much. And um, I'll catch you soon. Pleasure.